flesh, bones, and blood of the earth. There's a fire and water within me, and the air that I breathe of the world. And I know deep within me I live on and on, like the waters of life and the salt in the sea. I live on and on, but I don't yet know where. Where the waters of life and the salt of the sea they dissolve. There's a wind and it blows and it thunders, and the rains come and go on the plains. Once I saw you there standing before me, and now I am here all alone. And I know deep within me you live on and on like the waters of life and the salt in the sea. You live on and on, but I don't get. When the waters of life and the salt of the sea they dissolve. There was a Zen master, but he was fraud, and he has he kept two disciples. to speak for him and he himself was famous as the master of silence people would come to him but he would never speak his two mouthpieces would speak for him when his two disciples were out somewhere a seeker came into the monastery a newcomer a spiritual pilgrim and seeing the master sitting he approached and he asked few questions actually this has not happened before the master was always surrounded by his two disciples but now the disciples were not there and it is a situation of danger for the master the seeker came and asked master what is truth and the master was afraid he started looking here and there right and left the second question was what is dhamma or dharma the master is afraid he is searching his disciples to answer him answer for him he looks up and he looks down are they hiding in the ceiling somewhere the third question is asked what is zen now the master is absolutely in danger he doesn't know what to answer and he closes the eyes and starts praying tell me what is the answer tell me what is the answer to some 
imaginary God. And then the seeker asks, what is your blessing for the world? And now the master is defeated inside. He doesn't know what to do. He just keeps his hand forward with an outstretched hand and he means to say that I surrender, I don't know anything. The pilgrim is extremely happy. He goes out and there he meets those two disciples. And he tells them, your master is really enlightened. I asked him, what is truth? And he looked here and looked there. That means that truth is not here and there. It is within you. And when I asked him, what is Dhamma? What is Dharma? He looked up and he looked down. Dhamma means you have to remain stable. No ups and downs. And when I asked him, what is Zen? Then he closed his eye. That means religion cannot be defined. It is silence. And when I asked him, what is your blessing for the world? He just surrendered. That shows the highest stage of consciousness he has reached. This master is really the master. And you are very fortunate to be his disciples. Then the disciples reach the monastery and the master takes a stick and says, You fools, where were you? I was in extreme danger. So silence, even if it is pretended, it is assumed, even if it's a show of, even if it is to deceive someone, it does work. And silence, in fact is one of the greatest spiritual powers. The highest manifestation of power is to become calm. Speech has many disadvantages. Silence is supreme. Speech is faulty. Silence is introversion. Speech takes you away from yourself. Mahatma Gandhi has written in his autobiography that once he visited a monastery in South Africa. It was a Trappist monastery. And he was awestruck to find that all the disciples there, all the inmates of the monastery are observing the eternal oath of silence. Nobody is speaking. He was surprised. He went to the head of the monastery and asked him, why is this rule? Why nobody is allowed to speak? And the head of the monastery said, See, we human beings are so feeble. We are so weak creatures. We really do not know what to speak and what to speak. And even if we speak, most of the time, it is exaggeration. Or distortion of truth. Or untruth. So when we really do not know what to speak and even while speaking we do not say what is there in our mind but we speak in order to please somebody. We speak in order to defend ourselves. We speak because there is emptiness within. The head of the monastery says is it not better to keep the mouth shut rather than uttering any jargon.
and the votary of truth should be the man of silence. So today's Murli explores the power of silence. Baba has given two practices in this Murli. The one is silence that will lead to the generation of pure thoughts Sankalpa Shakti and second is to make the line clear in order to purify the mind you need pure thoughts impure thoughts are distractions The entire journey of spirituality is the journey of self-purification. Where we understand the deeper layers of our thoughts, emotions, the spiritual undercurrents, the deep-rooted sanskars or habits, it's a journey within. It has nothing to do with anything outside, happening outside. It is not something that we run and we achieve. It's something that we go within and try to understand ourselves. How do we react in particular situation? How do we take decisions in life? Or we are always in the state of limbo indecision, to do or not to do, to be or not to be. What? What? So, these are the two practices to make the line clear, the line of the intellect should become clear, pure. And that will happen with pure thoughts. And that will happen with churning, that will happen with silence, and that will happen with solitude. And that will happen when we dive deep within ourselves. So there are two practices. One is to lie in clear and second is the to observe silence. Silence is Vrat and observance people have done all the time. And really, it's very powerful. Intermittent silence, short silence, long silence, one day silence, three day silence, where you are not speaking, where you are out of touch with the world, total digital detox. Three days short silence is enough to recharge the battery of the soul. Extended silence, seven days, ten days, twenty-one days, thirty days, forty-five days, sixty days. There who there are people who observe prolonged silence. And those silence, that period of silence. When you enter into those silence, you don't feel like to speak anything. The speech appears superfluous. These are the two practices. And then Baba has described what is the last stage. How it will be like. And as we said yesterday, first we need to understand what is this last stage. And think that I am having that experience here and now. The celebration of completion we did yesterday. So in that last stage, you will be full authority. The mic doesn't want to speak. So in this higher stage of consciousness, all powers you feel within, you are master almighty authority. In this higher stage of silence, you have full understanding of knowledge, you are the master ocean of knowledge. In this higher stage, you are the embodiment of all the virtues are within you. 
In this higher stage, you are absolutely detached observer, Sakshi. In this higher stage, you are see, uh, you experience that companionship, not just of God, but of the cooperation and love of this each and every soul, elevated soul of this Brahmin family. So, higher stage of consciousness is that where whole knowledge, all powers, all virtues are within you. It is that stage where you are Sakshi. You are detached. So for a two minutes, for once, 30 seconds, just close your eyes and see what all you did yesterday from morning till night. What all things that happened to you? What time you got up? Then what you did? Whole day. As if you are an audience and you are watching the stage, on the stage. You are yesterday's you. Try to recall. People you met, circumstances that came, events that happened. What was the emotional state? Everything. Come back. So in order to develop this Sakshi, one of the practices is to try to recall what happened and see it as a detached observer. One. Second, observe the breath and watch it as a detached observer. Third, Observe the sensations which are on your body and observe them as a detached observer. Next, to observe the people who are with you, your colleagues, your seniors, your juniors, and they have their different sanskars, this different personalities, the ups and downs, somebody hurts you, somebody insults you, somebody irritates you, somebody agitates you. You react sometimes, sometimes you respond. What makes you to react? What makes you to respond? Respond. What things hurt the ego? Watch your own mind. Watch your own emotions, your own thoughts. And that work can be done at Amritvela. Seeing everything as detached observer. And the most importantly, your own self. So he will be detached observer. He will have divine drishti. He will have divine buddhi, intellect. He will have that divine smriti. All the time. This is the description of the highest stage of consciousness. Bab Saman, complete, perfect. They will have, they will speak the language of sankalp, thought. They will speak the language of eyes, bhavana. And they will be donor, great donors. These are all the features of the highest stage, the last stage. So, today's task is... You create a Sankalpa challenge where you create an elevated thought in your mind and see how it works. Bring testimonials of Sankalpa power. Elevated thought will lead to success. See the practical application of it. And you can create an artistic expression of the higher stages of consciousness like these two. Or rather this one, Sakshi. What does it mean to be a detached observer? Does it mean that somebody is getting hurt and somebody is beating somebody and you don't do anything? And there is an injustice rampant outside and you are just sitting. 
what exactly is this detached observer ship you can create some artistic picture of this spiritual state or you can create certain affirmations certain powerful affirmations to enhance sankalp shakti create generate pure thoughts be a pure thought generator go in silence sit near some natural places observe the nature observe the mountain observe the lakes observe the trees observe the vastness learn understand and new thoughts will come new elevated thoughts will come to you it's very difficult to have those elevated thoughts in a closed room come out the canopy of the sky is calling you the mountains are signaling you go and sit in the lap of nature and drink the nectar of pure thoughts om shanti